Now, I did have a graphic, uh, which I haven't added for some reason, but uh, in terms of the coaching outs and ins as well. So, uh, Johnny, I'm not sure if you've got the notes in front of you, but if you haven't, just I'll seeing out. the but... notes. Yeah, I've got the notes here. Beautiful. So, so the... yeah, go for going it, mate. Out. Uh, losing Daisy Pierce. She's off to AFLW West Coast as head coach. Uh, Sean Griggs off to Gold Coast. No surprise there. And Matthew Egan's off to Western Bulldogs. Um Bit of a shame to lose all those guys, but also pretty excited for Daisy Pierce to get head coach at West Coast. And you know, I know a lot of Cats fans had a lot of hard feelings about it, but what person in their right mind will turn down the head coaching role at a club? But yeah, I can't blame her. I think you're right. And we're, we're, Sean I think we're Greek, all happy for her. Yeah. yeah. And Sean Greek off the Gold Coast. Damien Hardwick's there. No surprise. And Matthew Egan just, you know, going off to find new, exciting ideas learn how to coach and whatnot so yeah i'm not too fussed about losing the coaches these coaches like it happens all the time coaches come in and go to get new ones it's not a i don't think it's going to be hugely impactful at the cats but it could be you got a fresh what about you guys? Wild, don't you? yeah yeah well i mean we saw all the comments about the departures in recent years you know scarlo and boris and all those sorts of guys and yeah as much as they're club legends and we love them it didn't seem to didn't hurt us we, was it the end of 2021 that that, that actually right. those departures happened? So then 2022, we won a premiership. Yep. So yeah, yeah it happens. Yeah. yeah. While well, we've got you, Paul, do you reckon that Shawnee Grigg and Matty Egan, are they senior coaches in the making at some stage? Uh, I'd love to see Matty Egan have a crack at winning a premiership as a coach. Uh, fortunately, for anyone who might be younger uh, than. 30 might not remember that he was an All-Australian in their 2007 Premiership year. Uh, missed out because of his – was it Navicular? I think that's what it was. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, he's been in the, in the coaching game for quite a while now. Is he a chance, Any, uh, do you reckon? Look, he's, he's certainly dabbling in a range of different roles. Obviously, he's, you know, kind of defence was kind of his starting point with, with uh, uh, in terms of the on-field exploits, but also off it in the coaching capacity. But then, obviously, with the Cats, he, was, he finished as a head of development. So, uh, it – it feels like he's trying to engage with a whole range of different coaching disciplines. And then it's just a matter of time as to whether he feels like he's ready to make that jump. And then of of course the other half of it being whether a club wants to take him on as the head coach, but it feels like he's a chance. Um, Sean Grigg is an interesting one. I think it's just a, yeah. Want to just rejoin old mate Dimmer. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I don't know. Don't know if necessarily development wise, and I, I wouldn't dare to necessarily accuse, but it, it feels like more of a, a reconvening – I'm a bit bothered by mosquitoes now. Um, sounds like more of an opportunity to reconvene with his good mate more so than necessarily taking another step up in terms of his coaching. But I could be wrong. Jake, how do you reckon Daisy's going to go over in in the West Coast? Do you reckon she's is, – is AFLW where it's it for her? Or could she you – know, not to say that's if, if that's as far as she goes, that's a fail. But do you, do you see her as an mm. AFL men's coach at some point in the future? Too early, maybe. yeah, hundred percent. Uh, no, I, I, I definitely think I think you know in our lifetime, in the next two decades, uh, whatever whatever number you want to put on it, I think it happens. I think Geelong is a great candidate to be one of the first teams to do it. Um, I think she's going to absolutely kill it over at the Eagles. I think it's a massive get. They they got a couple of massive gets from the Cats with not only um, Daisy Pierce but. Uh, Annabelle Johnson as well, who oh, yeah. I thought was mm. one of our best, say, three or four defenders from the Cats. So, no, I think it's great for Daisy. I think it's great for the development of her career. Uh, and like John said, like an absolute no-brainer. Like you're going to be, a, you know, was she a part-time assistant at Geelong? I can't remember what the exact, Something exact like that, term yeah. was. But, yeah, like, yeah. You, go, you go to being, you know, head of the operation and the chance to, to build – a club essentially from the ground up, you know, you're taking an Eagles team that was really struggling the last few seasons. And I think she's going to put them well and truly back on, on the map, which is awesome. Yeah. And if I, that I works out, maybe they can pivot her across the men's and try and build them back up too. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's <laughs> mid season. Oh dear. <laughs> Johnny, Johnny, take us through some of the new ins that we've got in the coaching ranks this year. And I should have had, I should have queued up the Lord of the Rings music here, but I, I will we'll blame Colin on that one. Yeah, <laughs> Colin's fault. Yeah. Um, 
So we've got Stephen King, Return of the King. I'm sure that's what music you're going to bring that's in. That's right. Well done. James Riley and Sean Higgins. So all three big cats people. Sean Higgins was North Melbourne, but he's always been written around Geelong. But I think it's it's good for the cats bringing back some legends of the Geelong Footy Club and especially Stephen King. I mean, he had a bit of senior coaching experience at that Gold Coast where he did really well. Riley was at Adelaide and he was, I think, midfield coach and he got that midfield up. Development maybe? Something? Or, I don't know. I could be wrong. Something, I can't remember. Didn't yeah, remember something like that. But he was highly been, rated though. Yeah, highly rated. And Sean Higgins, I'm pretty sure he's development and I feel like it's all good signs for the Cats, good people to bring in, people who know the Cats very well, know how the system works. So, yeah, no-brainers in my opinion. Paul, what do you what do you think, mate? Any um, I mean, you happy with that? At at face value, especially especially Kingy and Riley, um, they've they've got the experience now. Riley's obviously been with the Cats and then gone elsewhere to explore what other teams can offer before returning. Um, Kingy's kind of done a little bit of the circuit as well, and as was mentioned, has done the the head honcho gig at the Suns for a little while there, which is obviously huge experience. Um, and you know, positions him pretty well for opportunities down the line. Why the time was right for them to come back to the Cats, I don't know. That's, I guess, you know, totally their own choice. And uh, but they'll, I think, they'll be hugely beneficial for the Cats, though. So, well, yeah, the premiership sells. Premierships. Yep. <laughs> Jack, what do you reckon about Sean Higgins? Um, because you, you probably spent a fair bit of the the tail end of his career in the VFL and and on the injury on the injury list. Um, do you, what do you think of him as a in, as a coach? Uh, and have you heard any? Stories about him in terms of his leadership, uh, maybe at the VFL ranks. I know you're all across that. Yeah, look, I can't. Oh, I, I can't actually say. <laughs> no, that's right. I can't actually say I've heard any stories. But what I there's a couple of key points when you think about someone like Sean Higgins coming back, and that is he's a journeyman. So he's been at multiple different levels, multiple different clubs, knows the ins and outs of footy and what a footy career can entail, the highs, the lows, all that sort of thing. So I think. You know, that's a good influence to have around a group that's developing um, when you've got a, a mix of, you know, really young guys, a mix of guys who are at the back end of their career. Like, we talk a bit about, like, how do you develop the young guys? How do you see them into the side and, and develop their careers and all that? The other thing I think that gets talked about less but probably should get talked about more is how do you develop guys and help them transition at the other end? You know, guys who are getting towards you know speaking of the departures lounge like how do you manage that you need to have people around the club that are going to help them through a really tricky part of their career too like you know guys who might suddenly be playing a little bit more vfl um you know and who might have a retirement in the next two seasons i think that's an underrated part of having some experience like that around the club um i think obviously he must, you know, he knows his footy and that sort of thing. He's played enough of it. But the most important factor is the fact that he always wore his socks up. And that's something that should be mandatory um, for every player. And I think it's a, it's a great influence to bring back. I just had one last little note about James Rahili. Um, Forwards coach. Was on Chris Scott's 2011 AFL Premiership uh, staff. So ah, okay. He has won a premiership time. club already. Yes, yeah, 2011. So he was the, he was um, an assistant coach in 2008 with the VFL team. I was appointed to Chris Scott's senior coaching staff for the 2011 season. So maybe a good omen. There you go. 